So today is Father's Day 2024. It is Sunday, June the 16th. As I am getting ready to talk about this story, I don't know when the when the video will be uploaded to YouTube, but I just wanted to say that and I want to say Happy Father's Day to any of my subscribers who happen to be dads. This is a story that I, I made a video about this year, about two or three years ago, and I never did upload it. It's probably one of the first stories that I did. I didn't upload it because I didn't do justice to the story. This is a story that my best friend and myself talk about quite a bit, and it is probably one of the bigger mysteries surrounding our area. And, and when I say our area, I mean all of Appalachia, all of East Tennessee, East Kentucky, all, just this area in general. And this is the story of the missing child by the name of Dennis Martin who went missing in 1969. And the reason that I mentioned that I'm talking about this on Father's Day is because this young boy was with his family on a Father's Day camping trip in the Great Smoky Mountains when he disappeared. His story changed the way that searches are conducted and in order to talk about this story, doing research, there's so many YouTube videos, podcasts, there's pages and pages of stories about him. You have everything from the bizarre feral people in the mountains who came out and kidnapped this child, theories such as uh, Bigfoot got him, I think probably what happened to this child is that after he went missing that afternoon, overnight, later that evening and overnight, they got a very heavy uh, rainstorm. Just and, and it rained so hard that they had to call off all the searches. And I think that he probably slipped and fell in the water and his body was probably washed away. Now, people could argue, and I've argued this point myself, why was his body never found? I don't know, but that is my theory of what happened to him. Either that or the next possibility that I kind of, go back and forth between is that this was a human abduction that someone in the park found him and took him which doesn't make a lot of sense but stranger things have happened the reason I say it doesn't make a lot of sense is because the child went missing from his family very close to where his family was unless he got himself turned around and hiked away in an opposite direction and then came up on other campers or hikers who maybe lured him away with the promise of helping him find his family. So I'm just going to read from a couple of different websites. Like I said, I couldn't do justice to this story. It is still one of the biggest mysteries and uh, I'm just going to read this is from Wikipedia. Dennis Lloyd Martin was born June 20th, 1962. He was an American child who disappeared on June 14th, 1969 in the Great Smoky Mountains in Tennessee. He was six years old. The search effort was the most extensive in the park's history, covering around 56 square miles and using over a 1,400 searchers. Dennis Martin was from Knoxville, Tennessee, which is more or less an hour from the Great Smoky Mountains. He was visiting the Great Smoky Mountains National Park with his father, grandfather, and older brother for Father's Day weekend. The camping trip was a family tradition for the Martins, and they hiked from Cades Cove to Russell Field and camped overnight 
and the next day they hiked to Spence Field near the Appalachian Trail where they planned to, to camp another night. Martin disappeared on June 14th at around 6.30 while planning a surprise on the adults. Now, what they mean by that is the children, they came upon another group of campers and hikers, and they hiked along with them, and there were other children in that group. So he and his brother and these other children were playing kind of a hide-and-seek type games, and they came up with this idea to jump out on the adults on the hiking trail and kind of surprise them. So it was said that the boys all went off the path and into the woods and they were going to run on up ahead, wait for their father and grandfather and the other hikers. And when they got up close to them, they were all going to jump out and try to scare the adults. They said that Dennis was wearing a very bright red shirt. So he was told by the other boys to go off in a different direction where they where he wouldn't be seen. And that was the last time that Dennis was ever reported being seen. So after not seeing him for about five minutes, and when all the other children had come back, his father be began to become concerned. He began to search for Dennis, thinking that he was probably very close by, that he would hear him calling out his name and come running. But his father walked back down the trail for almost two miles. He was certain that his son couldn't have gotten any farther than that, being such a young, small boy. But after several hours of no sighting of Dennis, they decided to contact the park rangers. The area where Dennis disappeared is marked by steep slopes and ravines. Now, there are wild animals there. There are bear in the Great Smoky Mountain. This is a well-known fact. And they also claim that at the time, now I've been in the Smoky Mountains myself quite a few times. I have seen some black bear. I don't think I've ever seen any wild hogs or bobcats. But now, keep in mind, 1969, things might have been different. Um, a bar possibly could have dragged him away. And I don't know if they searched caves, if they searched these ravines. So, shortly after Dennis's disappearance, a downpour broke out, dropping three inches of rain in a matter of hours. It washed out trails and caused streams to flood. Now, this rainstorm took away quite a bit of any hopes that a that uh, dogs could pick up his smell. So the search efforts began the next day, and the National Guard and the Green Berets came in, but they found no traces. Heavy rains during the first day's search and a mist that continued on into the next day slowed down efforts. Up to, up to 1,400 people were involved in the search effort, potentially obscuring clues. Now, what they mean is there were so many people. They had local people. They had the Rangers. They had the National Guard. They had local police and sheriff and Boy Scouts and just local people all showed up wanting to help. Um, it, it was very unorganized, and people were just going off in different areas, different directions, trampling along the trails and the paths, and probably a lot of them were not skilled in what to search for. So it's believed that even though they were there for a good reason, and they were doing they were there to try to help, they were actually probably causing the search area to be um, the any clues of, that Dennis might have left behind could have been wiped away. Now, there was a child-sized footprint found on a stream, on a path that led down to a stream, and then they disappeared when they reached the stream, and one of the footprints was a barefoot footprint of a child 
Um, now, there was a footprint of an Oxford-style shoe, which was the type of shoe that Dennis was wearing. Retired park ranger and author Dwight McCarter believes that the prints probably did belong to Dennis Martin, as they were not part of another group of footprints. But there were young Boy Scouts who came in with the searches, and it's possible that one of these footprints could have belonged to them. But the barefoot footprint could possibly have belonged to Dennis. It's possible that during this heavy rain and the mud, his shoe could have become loose and come off of his foot. But the footprints disappeared at the stream. This is one of the reasons why it, it kind of went into my mind that he got wiped away by water and washed away. By June the 22nd, 56 square miles of ground had been covered. Now, they'd brought in helicopters, but because of the heavy rain and the fog and the mist that was left, they really couldn't do a air search at that time. More than a 1,000 searchers continued to look up until June the 26th when the search efforts were cut back. The search was stopped and abandoned on June the 29th. The search was officially closed on September the 14th, 1969. Now, as of 2022, when this article was written, it is still the largest search ever conducted in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. Dennis's father offered a $5,000 reward, which would be the equivalent of around $42,000 today, for information a few years later after a now this is something that I remember about this story a ginseng hunter now it's illegal to search for ginseng in the Great Smoky Mountains so this man claimed that he didn't come forward at the time because he was afraid of getting in trouble if, if it was discovered that he was out there searching for ginseng he claimed to have discovered the scattered skeletal remains of a small child in an area called Big Hollow in the Tremont area. He kept this, he kept this to himself until 1985. He was fearful that he would be prosecuted for illegal ginseng search. Now, I argued the point that he could have come forward anonymously he could have just said, you know, I was out there hiking and I come up on some remains in this area and I think that uh, someone should go out there and search, recover these remains and see if these belong to Dennis. Like I said, he could have come forward anonymously or he could have come forward and said, you know, that he was just in the area hiking, but I think he was afraid that they would see that ginseng had been dug up and removed. So here are some theories about Dennis' disappearance. The first is that he became lost and perished from exposure or some other cause. I, I, I kind of agree with the first theory is that he became lost and died from exposure or some other kind of, um, but also because of the fact that of this heavy downpour of rain, he may have gone searching for some type of shelter and slipped and fell in the mud and got washed into the water. Another theory is that he was attacked by a bear and carried off. The next theory is that he was abducted and taken out of the park by someone. His father is a, has agreed with that theory. On the afternoon that Martin disappeared, tourist Harold Key and his family heard an enormous sickening scream. This is how they described it. And shortly thereafter, they saw a shaggy man running up a trail 
carrying a young child. They claim that the shaggy man had the child. They thought at first it was just a bag of clothing uh, that he had thrown over his shoulder, such as something like a backpack or a duffel bag. But when they heard the screams, they realized that this was a child that he was carrying over his shoulder. Now, Harold Key claims that his sighting happened about an hour after Dennis was last seen and about seven miles away. Park rangers and the FBI concluded that there was insufficient evidence in this um, story. They claim that given that Key's sighting was five miles from where Dennis Martin disappeared at the exact time of the sighting, well, what they're saying here is there were no trails that connected the area where this Harold Key and his family claimed to have seen this man. There were no trails that would have connected to the trails in the area that Dennis Martin's family was hiking. So unless Dennis Martin was picked up and driven by car, there was no way that he could have gotten to that other area especially not within less than an hour's time on foot. I think his father believed that story because he wanted hope. He wanted to continue to hold out hope that someone had just taken his son and that his son wasn't dead. Now that's from Wikipedia, and I'm going to read on to another story. Now, this is from a website called All That's Interesting. And I'll be probably repeating myself a little bit on these stories, but I just wanted to uh, read from some different sites. Like I said, there's so much. There's so many different websites out there dedicated and stories and podcasts and such dedicated to this disappearance and many of them do have the same details because there was a lack of any further details. In June 1969, Dennis Lloyd Martin walked off to play a prank on his family and never returned, sparking the largest search effort in the history of the Great Smoky Mountains. On June 13, 1969, William Martin brought his two sons, Douglas and Dennis, along with his father, Clyde, on a camping trip. It was Father's Day weekend, and the family planned to hike the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. The hike was a family tradition, and the first day went smoothly. Six-year-old Dennis managed to keep up with the more experienced hikers, and the Martins met up with family friends on the second day and continued to Spence Field, a highland meadow in the western Smokies that is popular for its views. As the adults gazed at the scenic mountain views, the boys snuck off to pull a prank on them, but it did not go as planned. During the prank, Dennis vanished into the woods. He was never seen again. Dennis Martin set off on the hike wearing a bright red t-shirt. It was the six-year-old's first overnight camping trip. The youngest in his family, Dennis must have been very excited to get to go on this traditional Father's Day camping trip. But on the second day, tragedy struck. On the second day, after meeting up with another family, Dennis and his brother split off with the two other boys to play together. William Martin watched as the children whispered a plan to sneak up on the adults. The boys ran off into the forest, but Dennis's red shirt stood out against the green background. So they told Dennis to sneak away in a different direction. Now this was what... This is what they said. 
that they told Dennis that he would be spotted because of his shirt. So he was told to hang back or to go on ahead or however it was to kind of get away from the group so he wouldn't be seen. When the boys jumped out on the adults in a, this attempt to scare them, Dennis was not with them. As the minutes ticked by, William, the father, called out to Dennis, but the boy never answered. After several minutes, he began to panic, and he knew that something was wrong. The adults broke up and walked out into the forest, searching different areas, looking for Dennis. William walked two miles, frantically calling for Dennis. Without radios, and there was no way to communicate with the outside world, the Martins decided that Clyde, the grandfather, would hike to Cades Cove Ranger Station, which was nine miles away. When night fell, a thunderstorm moved in. In a matter of hours, the storm dropped three inches, washing out trails and leaving behind no evidence of Dennis. At 5 a.m. on June 15, 1969, the search for Dennis Martin commenced. The National Park Service put together a crew of 30 men. The search party quickly swelled to 240 people as volunteers began to come in. The search party soon included park rangers, local college students, firefighters, Boy Scouts, Green Berets, and local police departments. Without any clear directions or an organized plan, the searchers crossed the National Park looking for evidence. And the search continued day after day with no sight of Dennis Martin. Helicopters and planes took to the air to search a growing patch of the National Park. On June 20th, Dennis's seventh birthday came, and there were nearly 800 people who participated in the search. This included the members of the Air National Guard, the U.S. Coast Guard, and the National Park Service. A week into the search, the National Park Service put together a plan to what to do if they did discover Dennis's body. After 13,000 hours of searching yielded nothing, the volunteers may have accidentally destroyed clues without meaning to because of the rain, the mud, and just so many people going off on their own. And like I said, a lot of them probably were unskilled and didn't know what to look for. As the days flew past, it became more and more clear that the boy would not be found alive. Now, let's keep in mind there are cases of disappearances where people do show back up. I did a story, a video on my, you can find it on my YouTube channel, about a young girl who was roughly the same age as Dennis who went missing in um, Arkansas. But she was found a week or so after her disappearance. And we've all, we all know of stories where people have disappeared and later turned up. So I don't think that the family wanted to give up hope that he would be found alive. Um, because the father was holding out hope that the story of this man carrying this child away was true. So the, fam the family put up a $5,000 reward for information. They received a flood of phone calls from psychics claiming to know what happened to Dennis. But over a half a century later, no one knows any answers of what happened to Dennis Martin. Some believe that Dennis Martin was the victim of a more vicious attack. Now, here comes these theories, and there are videos, there are stories out there dedicated to this. 
Um, I've had some people comment on a couple of my videos. I don't lean toward the bizarre, such as 411 and some of the theories of alien abductions or stuff like that. I think that most of the time when human beings go missing, it's either by the hands of another human being or some accident. But some people believe that Dennis Martin became the victim of cannibalistic, feral humans who lived undetected in the Smoky Mountains National Park. I don't personally believe in this. Um, there, there probably were people living in the Smoky Mountains National Park as there are people who go into the national parks and stay for a very long extended period of time. Now they are more watched. People are more watched. Hiking and camping areas are more watched by the National Park Service. However, in 1969, there probably were people who went into the mountains and lived. I don't think they were um, cannibalistic. I could be wrong, but I don't believe that theory. For the most part, the Martin family believes that someone may have kidnapped their son. Now, they go back to the story about the man who claims to have seen this stranger running through the woods, carrying what he believed to be a young child over his shoulder, and heard the screams of a child. And then they come back to this ginseng hunter who claimed to have found a child's skeleton about three miles downhill from where Dennis went missing. But after the man reported this, uh, park rangers put together a group of 30 hunters or rescuers, and they couldn't find any traces of this. It's believed that the case of Dennis Martin will always be a mystery and that it will never be solved. I think the only way that it might ever be solved is if his, if any remains are ever found and DNA is tested and it does turn out to be Dennis Martin's remains, but it won't tell the story of what, how he got there. It's possible that um, this young child was just so scared and if it was true that this man did find the skeleton three miles down from where Dennis was last seen, he, it's possible that he was trying to hike his way out, but kept going deeper into the woods. The failure to find Dennis and the mistakes made during the search led to sweeping changes in the search and rescue operations not only in the Smoky Mountains, but throughout the National Park Service. Agencies around the world still study the Dennis Martin disappearance and search efforts and use it as a training tool to train searchers. I think that if you can take anything away from the Dennis Martin disappearance is that it probably helped lead to the um, recovery of other missing persons or the remains of missing persons as they used it to train um, search and rescue teams, not only in the United States, but around the world. Only five missing person cases in the Smokies remain unsolved. Now, I've done a story on, on Trini Lynn Gibson, who was a teenage girl who went on a field trip with her classmates from her school in Knoxville. They went into the Smoky Mountains in 1976, and something happened to her on this trip, and she was never seen again. Another is Thelma Pauline Melton who went missing in 1981. She was hiking with some friends of hers as she went on ahead of them as they were very familiar with this area as they came there and they brought their campers and camped quite often. 
so she was familiar with these trails and this this was a very easy trail it wasn't one of the deeper trails she went on up ahead of the group that she was with and they never saw her again she never returned to her campsite and those videos are both available on my youtube channel we'll most likely never know what happened to dennis martin the martin family believes at one point dennis may have been kidnapped but fbi agents found no evidence to support that uh, bears seldom attack humans even a child but it's possible that had dennis come up on a bear and it surprised him and he may have screamed it's possible that a bar could have attacked him but i think they probably would have found remains park officials believe that he fell victim to hypothermia after a heavy rainstorm and the temperatures dropped into the night that he may have been swept away and disappeared in the water there have been books written about dennis the disappearance of dennis lloyd martin lost in the great smoky mountains you can find that on amazon um, i think most people who want who who go with the theories that either another human a feral human or a or a person who just wanted to kidnap a child or something like that or maybe just someone who came upon him and took him and gave him a life somewhere off in the world i think people want to go with those theories because it's easier to believe than to believe that a child died out there alone in this forest and um was never found despite the numerous people who came in to search for him. Most disappearances result from accidents related to the outdoors. People who become unprepared during weather or who have chance encounters with animals. Now, there have been bar attacks in the Smoky Mountains. There have been people who have died because of bar attacks in the Smoky Mountains. But they are, are killed by these bars, and their bodies are found where the bar attacked them at. Now, keep in mind, Dennis Martin was a small little boy, and it is possible that a bar could have dragged him away. But where did it drag him to? Did the national parks are and and now I don't know about in 1969, but now for the most part, the park service, the rangers, track these bars. They kind of have an idea of what areas they're in. But did they go search in areas where bars were known? Did they search any caves and you know? And a small boy wandering around through the woods maybe possibly even into the night in pitch black could have fallen into a ravine could have fallen into you know over rock over a rock cliff um any any theories any number of different theories could have happened now on june the 18th searchers found a trail of shoeless footprints during the investigations, searchers found a set of one shoe on, one shoe off footprints heading south from Spence Field. Considering Dennis's brother and cousins initially headed south while attempting to scare their parents, this may have been a sign that Dennis got turned around trying to follow them and just became lost and ended up at the edge of the creek where the water had swollen from this heavy rain and did he fall into the stream and was carried away but after casts were made of these shoe prints the martin family determined that they didn't believe that these belonged to dennis 
because they looked like they were would have been too big for Dennis. Some people suggested that Dennis hid. The Martins worried that Dennis being a very shy child might have prevented him from coming out when these people were out there searching for him, but I don't believe that. I believe the Martin family, like any other parents, wanted to hold on to any kind of theory that led to hope that he was alive. Um, now, keep in mind this little girl in the story that I did, Catherine von Aust. She told searchers when she was found that she could hear them calling for her and that when she called back out to them, they didn't see her. and They didn't hear her calling back out. But she claimed that she did at a couple of different times hear people calling her name, but they didn't see her and when she would call back out. Dennis could easily have eluded searchers by crouching under brush. I don't think this happened. I think a young child, that smile, would have been so scared being in the woods alone overnight in a rainstorm and into the next day that when someone came upon him and called out his name, he would have come running. So I don't, I don't believe that theory at all. The theory that Dennis got lost and, and fell victim to the elements is more likely. The Smokies is breathtaking. Their mountains are filled with steep slopes, jagged rocks, and deep crevices. If Dennis became lost, he could easily have fallen into a hole that was covered by thick brush and laurel. He may never have been able to climb out. Thirst, hunger, or even uh, injury could have caused his death. If he fell into the turbulent creek, water could have carried him off. Even some of the most skilled seasoned hikers have fell victim to accidents in these types of forests. And the Great Smoky Mountains is um, has different terrains. You do have areas that is very rocky, and then you have your areas where it's fields, and then you have your hiking wooded areas. So a six-year-old child, unskilled, never having been camping before, would have been a very, you know, it would have been very easy for him to have been injured or lost. He was wearing nothing but a t-shirt and shorts and his shoes. And the temperatures that night dropped below 50. Had he been wet from this rain, it's possible that he could have fell victim to hypothermia. However, unless his body had been carried away or he did fall down into some deep crevice, how come his body was never found? The Smoky Mountains are considered the third most dangerous national park. Survival would have been difficult under the best of circumstances. Over half a century has passed. And one park ranger says that he believes that they will never know the truth about what happened to Dennis. It's virtually impossible after all this time. People still debate what happened to Dennis. But the unfortunate truth is that with time scavenging animals, the forest growth itself has forever erased any clues to what may have happened to Dennis. Unless his skull or other bones are ever discovered and DNA testing is conducted, they'll never know what happened. And that they refused to leave because they believed that Dennis was out there somewhere and that they would return to the Smoky Mountains quite often in hopes that some new clue would come up. 
The largest search for a missing person in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park to this day remains a mystery. At the center of this story is a family who continued to search for years following the uh, disappearance of their child. The search for six-year-old Dennis Martin is remembered in East Tennessee and beyond because of the mystery surrounding his disappearance. A 16-day search effort that began on June the 14th is cited by professionals as a definitive search that contributed to the science of search and rescue management today. So like I said earlier, the only po positive and good thing that you can take away from this is that it did help them to train search and rescue teams, especially to go into these types of areas and what to search for um, what not to do. So this case is still being studied today to train people on how to search for others who go missing. On the 14th day of the search, the White House began to monitor the story of Dennis Martin. 300 federal troops were sent in after a call was made to a state senator, said that the National Park Service told that they were not accepting outside help. But I don't think that was true because of all these other volunteers, Boy Scouts and others who came in to help search for Dennis. It may have been that after so many days of all these people trampling all over the place that the National Park decided to limit the number of people that came in to search. Retired park ranger Dwight McCarter, who worked on the who worked for the National Park Service for decades, said that he has assisted on more than a hundred searches within the park. He says most commonly searches involving young boys. He keeps a list of the most of the search and rescue operations that he's been a ha that he's been a part of. At the time, he had only been on the job for a few years and was considered a newbie when it came to searches. He isn't phased being back on the part of the Appalachian Trail that leads to Spence Field. In fact, he says he's a different searcher today because of this. He said Dennis's grandfather asked him to hike with him throughout the park. Two years later, three years later, old man Clyde, the grandfather, would come back to the Smoky Mountains and search. And this park ranger would go out with him. Did he expect that they would ever find anything? He, he knew that the grandfather was something that he had to do. He was led to come back every year and search. I will wrap up this video by just saying that with all the theories, everything from a Bigfoot to a feral cannibal humans living in the dark reaches of the Smoky Mountains to animal attacks to human abduction to alien abduction, supernatural happenings, um, all the stuff that you might hear and read about on some of the more bizarre um, websites and YouTube channels. I tend to go with Dennis Martin went into the woods with his family, a playful child, having fun, playing a game of something such as hide and seek, ran ahead, maybe he thought he was going back toward the trail, when in fact he was going away from the trail, and before he knew it, he lost his way. I believe he continued to walk through the woods. As the time went on, he probably became panicked, as a little child would, an adult would, I would, and he probably just lost his way.
He couldn't hear his father calling for him. I believe it's a very good possibility that there was a skull found. This man should have come forward at the time that he discovered this. And maybe this case could have been solved at that time. I also believe that there's a very good possibility that these footprints were Dennis's that led down to the water. I don't know how far away from the area where this skeletal remains was supposedly spotted is from the water area where the footprints were spotted. It's possible that Dennis ran down the hill, saw the water, turned and went back and then succumbed to the elements during the night hours and died right there in that spot. And he, his body could have been carried away by animals over time. But I go with that. I, I, I really hate to bust any bubbles out there that, you know, Dennis mystery is anything more than a young child who became lost disoriented scared the dark came the rain came and it's possible that he did fall into the water and get washed away thanks for watching